Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to go through plant growth factors, in particular IAA and tropisms. If you are new here then just click the subscribe button to keep up to date with all the videos. So first of all, just a bit of a recap from GCSC and looking at how this then um, progresses in A-level. So responses in flowers are tropisms. And that's the term given to when the plant does respond to a stimuli, but the response it has is linked to its growth and cell elongation. And tropisms can be described as positive if the plant ends up leaning towards and growing towards the stimulus, or negative if it results in a part of the plant growing away from the stimulus. And the three key stimuli that you will learn about are light, gravity and water. So, so far that's all the same as GCSE. Where it becomes different is at GCSE you were told that plants have hormones and the key hormone is auxin. Now plants don't have hormones because the definition of hormone is a chemical that tra is transported in the blood to cause a change and plants do not have blood. So instead, we call these chemicals plant growth factors. And auxins is actually a group of plant growth factors. And the key one that is described at GCSE that we just call auxin is indole acetic acid. And we're going to call that IAA for short throughout this video. So IAA is a type of auxin, which is a type of growth factor in plants. And this... Um, plant growth factor in the shoots if you have high concentrations of IAA it will cause the cells to elongate and in the roots it will inhibit the growth and the elongation of the cells and IAA is made in the tip of the roots and the tip of the shoots but it can diffuse through cell to cell to move to other locations so tropisms then this response the key one, first of all, we're going to have a look at is phototropism. Photo meaning light. So this is the response to light. And we're going to look at the roots first of all. So you need to know why plants need light in the first place. And this links to the light dependent reaction in photosynthesis. And I'll link my video up here on the LDR so you can see exactly how the light is needed in photolysis and in the um, photoionization of chlorophyll. So this is why plants need light. So it is in their favor to grow and bend towards the light source. And this is controlled by a IAA. So it's an example of, we can see an example of a positive phototropism. So the start point is always, the IAA is produced in the tip of the shoot. Now, if the light was evenly distributed, the IAA would just diffuse downwards, away from the um, overall distribution of the light source. And this would then cause cells to elongate throughout the shoot, and therefore the plant grows upwards. But if you have a unilateral, so one direction of light, IAA will always diffuse from the shoot tip towards the most shaded part of the shoot. So that's what we're starting to see in pictures two, three, and four. The IAA is diffusing to the shaded side. And because we now have a higher concentration of IAA on the shaded side, the cells on that shaded side will elongate. So that now means the shaded side of the plant is longer than the side that's in the sun. And that extra weight from the shaded side's length causes the plant to bend and lean towards the light source. So the key thing is it's cell elongation. That is the phrase that you would need on the mark scheme. Now in the roots, it has the opposite effect. So roots do not photosynthesize, so they don't require light. However, one of the roles of the roots, as well as to absorb water and mineral ions, is to help anchor the plant into the ground. And to be able to do that successfully, 
it's an advantage for the gr the roots to grow away from the light source because that would mean they're deeper into the soil and therefore they're anchoring the plant more. So in roots, a high concentration of IAA has the opposite effect. It inhibits cell elongation and therefore it would cause root cells to elongate more on the lighter side and therefore the root bends away from the light. So we get negative phototropism, meaning it grows away from the stimulus, which is light. And that's what this animation here is showing. The IAA originates in the tip of the root, but the IAA diffuses towards the shade, the more shaded side in the ground. So it moves away, diffuses away from the light source, but that inhibits the growth. So the top side cells elongate more and the root bends down. So gravitropism, we're going to have a look at next. In this case, in the shoots, IAA will diffuse again from the tips where it's made to the lower side of the shoots. So IAA diffuses towards the pull of gravity. So if the plant is vertical, that means that the IAA will just diffuse down the shoot and the cells at the bottom of the shoot will elongate causing the plant to grow upwards. Now you could do as an experiment to show the effect of gravitropism, put a plant in a completely dark room, so there's no interaction with the stimulus of light, and lie the plant on its side. And what will then happen is the IAA, which is produced in the tip of the shoot, will diffuse to the side of the plants nearest the bottom because of the pull of gravity, Therefore, those cells will elongate and it will cause the shoot to bend upwards. So we get this negative gravitropism. So we'd see something like we have in this animation. In the roots, again, opposite effects. So IAA moves towards the lower side of the root. So it moves towards gravity. It will diffuse towards gravity. And you should be using the phrase diffuse rather than just move. And in the roots, as we said, IAA causes inhibition of that cell elongation. So therefore, the roots will bend towards gravity, helping to anchor the plant. And this time it's positive gravitropism because the plant is growing towards the stimulus, which is gravity. So that is it for IAA and plant growth factors. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up.